This is Access TV. My name is Susan Liu. Today, my guest is Jacqueline Ko and her sister, Stephanie Ko. Jacqueline and Stephanie are the co founders of Opera Manipursa. And Jacqueline is an artistic director. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. And would you tell us about your company? Well, we founded Opera Mariposa six seasons ago, 2012. Yeah. And I'm a singer, and I started singing when I was 10 years old. My teacher was an opera singer, and it became very clear that my voice was very suited to opera, so um, it seemed natural. And I started producing shows when I was 16 years old, yeah. and I just I loved the whole creative process of not just being in shows, but putting shows together and giving other singers opportunities as well. So it just seems like a natural progression to put together a company. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Would you tell me um, what has your company done that you are most proud of? I'm proud of the fact that we've done six seasons of Opera Mariposa that, you know, yeah. we've... I think we're proud of every show that we've done. <laughs> yeah. You know, like every show is a lot of work. We work with some amazing people. We meet all sorts of different new talented people. Uh, one of the things that's closest to our heart is every year we do a charity fundraiser. Um, so this will be our sixth year doing that. In the past five years, we've raised, how much is it? Over $50,000. For charity, yeah. That's and so important. that's a big deal to us. So at least your passion. I know you have uh, your show is on June, June 16th? Yeah. 16th, yes. Yeah, would you talk about this? Well, this show, it's a concert. It's called Toward Tomorrow. And we're raising funds for MEFM BC. It's a charity. Uh, this MEFM Society of BC. Um, my sister and I both have a chronic illness known as myogenic encephalomyelitis, uh, sometimes referred to by other names. A common one you may have heard is chronic fatigue syndrome, though the name is under dispute. Um, and. So the MEFM Society of BC helps patients and their families who have illnesses like myogenic encephalomyelitis and other related diseases. So it's a cause that's very close to our heart. That's a similar cause to what we've raised funds for in past years. So that's what this fundraiser is about. I think the first fundraiser that you did was, how old were you? I was 17. So a while ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah and I, at that point, um, I had never really heard of an event done to raise awareness and to raise funds for our illness. So I decided that I wanted to do that. And when we founded Mariposa, we've done that every year since. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I think, haven't heard of myogenic encephalomyelitis. It's, um, it's not as well known, it's often not taught in medical schools or else it's taught incorrectly and people have, you know, wrong oh, ideas about outdated it. Outdated ideas. Outdated information um, to the point where some doctors, if they've heard of it, they may even recommend treatments that are actually dangerous to patients because that's the information that they have. But it's a very common illness. It affects around twice as many people as multiple sclerosis, around over 500,000 people in Canada have been diagnosed with it. There are as many as 30 million people worldwide who have it. So it affects an incredible number of people. So it's rather staggering because not only is it seldom taught in medical school, but there's barely any research funding. I think in Canada, the latest figures are about 11 cents per person who has it compared to hundreds or th thousands of dollars of, that go towards other illnesses per patient. Um, Statistics Canada says that people who have myogenic encephalomyelitis have the lowest average household incomes, the highest levels of food insecurity, and the greatest level of unmet health care needs for any patient group for chronic illness in all of Canada. So it's staggering that not enough people know about it. So it's very important for us not to just fundraise for a charity that supports patients and their families, supports research, supports yes. advocacy, um, education for the public, for healthcare practitioners, for the government, but also to get the word out there about the illness 
in general and make people who have this illness visible. They often call myalgic encephalomyelitis an invisible illness because most people who have it, either they present as quite healthy like us for part of the day if we rest up ahead of time <laughs> or else they are so ill that they can't see people and so no one wow. knows they exist. 75% of people with ME um, cannot work even part-time. 25% of them can't leave the house or their bed. We've been had times where we're so sick we can't swallow or feed ourselves or talk or focus our eyes, never mind do things like walk or have conversations or perform. Or even watch a movie. Yeah. Um, basically, the hallmark of myalgic encephalomyelitis is, and sometimes why it's called chronic fatigue syndrome, even though the name is under dispute, is because it causes fatigue. Um, not what people think of as being tired, like sleepy, more like if you've had chemotherapy or if congestive heart failure, I think, are um, often compared in terms of the level of severity of fatigue. And, and it's fatigue that is unrelieved by sleep mm -hmm. and rest. And it's caused by anything you do, either physical or cognitive. So whether it's going for a walk or whether it's reading a book, uh, and anything you do causes a flare-up, kind of like a hangover, <laughs> I, I hear. <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, um, of the fatigue and of as many as 60 other symptoms. And so it's, it's a very debilitating illness. And because we're at the point now, fortunately, some of the lucky few who can go out in public and speak about this, it's very important for us to do so. So both of you suffer from the uh, chronic illness, mm -hmm. yeah. but you are very strong to stand in the stage. It's very inspired. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And do you need any support, and what kind of support do you need? We would love for people to come out and support this show, mm -hmm. yeah. learn more about this illness, and support this wonderful cause, this wonderful charity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, show is called Toward Tomorrow. It's on June 16th, as you mm -hmm. said, at Marple United Church, 7.30. Mm -hmm. Tickets are available online at operamariposa.com. We really think people should come and see what the show's about. I mean, it's, it's for a really important cause, but it's also just a really fun show. Jackie's going to be performing in it, so she yeah. can tell you a bit about yes. what she's doing. Or it's a whole variety of music. We have opera, we have mm -hmm. musical theater, you know, a range of genres, so there's something to be for everyone to enjoy. And you have and other singers? Yes, I have two other fabulous singers, Brittany Lefevre, a tremendously talented mezzo-soprano, and Lyndon Ladeur, who's a multi-award winning tenor, and will be accompanied by Nina Horvath on the piano. And then also the event's going to have um, other elements, we're going to have a reception. We're going to have a bunch of raffle prizes for charity. There's a bunch of uh, companies, local businesses, that have actually donated prizes uh, that audience members can win. So we have tickets to Vancouver Opera, to the Vancouver Bach Choir, a jewelry making workshop, salsa dancing, gift certificates. You know, it's uh, really exciting. Oh, great. So people just uh, go to your website. Yep. Yeah. They can get AB information from it. Yep, yes, at yes. operamariposa.com. Okay, so go to the website and thank you for your time and we are looking forward to your performance. <laughs> thank you, thank we you. look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> this is Access TV, my name is Susan Du. Thank you for watching.